sure can. It's a beautiful slide. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um, rank map versus Yoast SEO. So I did, I've been testing rank map a little bit, and then I did a lot more research on the two of them and um, put this together to compare the two for you. I'm going to go through a lot of the features, and then I also have a demo that we're going to do um, comparing each of them. So first, a little bit of the backstory. Um, Dave gave you a little bit, but Yoast has been around since uh, 2007, and it was kind of the first, you know, plugin to really bring together all the features that it does have, making it easy for even non-technical people to optimize their websites. And it was really known for doing a lot of the optimization for you if you didn't quite know what else to do, and it would, you know, sort of take that and at least cover the basics. And um, everybody kind of got the little green circles everyone you know if you've used Yoast and you've said a keyword you'll see this later when we do a demo but you know there's always this goal to you know try and get all your little circles to turn green and Yoast kind of got known for that to get the best score and it has a little temperature gauge to show how well you're doing in terms of optimizing your post or your page and Rank Math just came on the scene about two years ago and there's been other SEO plugins like all along there's been you know, different ones out there, but Rank Math is the first one in a while to really gain as much traction as it has. And um, we used it completely free. And you'll see all kinds of reviews out there saying, wow, Rank Math does everything Yoast does plus more for free. Um, Rank Math actually does have a premium version now. So for the first two years, they were 100% free. And then in uh, November 9th, 2020, they launched their premium version. Mm -hmm. So now there is a free and a premium of rank math. And so you'll see the three price, free premium, and then there's a business version for um, multiple websites or like an agency. And then Yoast has free or it's $89 a year. And then they kind of incrementally go up from there on how many websites you are going to, you want to use it on. And they do have some plugins that you pay extra for in addition to that. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an overview of, you know, where it, they're from. Okay, so what will WordPress SEO, you know, will an SEO plugin do SEO for you? That's always sort of, you know, you get these people saying, oh, just plug this in and you'll have great SEO. Just turn it on. Um, you know, an SEO plugin gives you all the tools to do SEO and it automates tasks, but it doesn't necessarily do can't do every SEO for you. It can't think for you. So I kind of made a list of some things, what a plugin can do and can't do. So it makes the technical tasks easier and it automates some of your SEO tasks and it can guide you in your SEO decisions, giving you some tips and advice and evaluating what you're already doing. It gives you the tools to optimize your site to make it easy so you don't have to go into the code to make these kinds of changes. At the same time, it doesn't know your business better than you do. And it can't really make marketing strategy decisions. The SEO is very tied to your strategy and your marketing and the core of your business and what that's all about. Um, plugin can't write good marketing copy for you, even though they'll give you some tips on your content and say, hey, you should include a power word here or, you know, a keyword here. You still mm -hmm. have to really be able to, you know, write that copy yourself. So a plugin is not going to just do everything for you. And it's not going to guarantee SEO results either. I think I saw one video out there. They had a screenshot of they plugged in rank math and, you know, they see their stats just shoot up, right? But it's not just plugging in the, you know, the plugin itself isn't going to magically make that much of a difference. I mean, maybe if you weren't doing anything, it will make it better for sure. But it's how you use it is really important also. So that's where it goes back even to um, Nick's talk from last week and understanding content, understanding SEO and understanding how you're gonna apply all these tools and use them to really um, improve you know, your organic search traffic on your site. So I've got kind of a long list of features here and I just sort of evaluated. I'm just gonna go through them fairly quickly and so that we can move into the demo. But I did try to go through a whole bunch of the features that they both offer and kind of compare what Rank Math offers and what Yoast offers. So I'll just try and go through those. Um, some of them might be technical for you and some of them might be more obvious, just depending on where you're at and your skill level. But I'll just kind of run through these and they're not in any particular order, except that I did kind of separate out global features for like your entire website compared to things when you're editing a single post or page. So 404 Monitor, 
that is something that um, Rank Math promotes. They'll let you know if you have any, you know, pages or links that result in 404 errors, um, broken links on your site. So one of the things that Math kind of promotes is they do some of the things that people tend to use multiple plugins for. So you can do more things with just one plugin. So a lot of people use Broken Link Checker, for instance. This would kind of eliminate the need to do that. And so that's included. The monitor is included for free. Um, you can, if you have the premium version, you can export the log of your errors. Um, Yoast has an article about it on their um, blog, and they talk about using Monster Insights and talk about how to do that. So redirects, both um, Rank Map and Yoast offer that. And that's for a case, for instance, if you're editing a blog post and you're optimizing it and you realize there's no keywords in your, your slug, your URL slug, and you decide you wanna change the URL for your website, it, you kind of need a 301 redirect. You need, it's like a change of address telling Google and the world like, hey, this page moved to a different location because if you change that slug, you're changing where your page is found. And so you either have to manually go do that redirect or you know, unless you have a plugin like this, it does it for you. So Rank Math will actually do redirects automatically in the free version. Um, and then they have some advanced functionality in the premium. Yoast, you have to have the premium version to get the automatic redirects. So third-party services, there's kind of a long list of them. Um, rank map, so that WooCommerce, you know, I tried to put the dollar sign where you had to pay extra for an additional plugin, but I don't think, it, I probably accidentally put it just because it's part of the premium feature um, because Rank Math doesn't have any other plugins. You either pay for the premium or you don't. And if you pay for the premium, you get everything. And so um, if you pay for the premium with Rank Math, you, there's a WooCommerce module, there's Elementor, there's a Divi integration, BB Press, Buddy Press, um, Easy Digital Downloads, if you use that, that's super helpful. And um, in Yoast, the, uh, um, some of it is free, the classic editor, Gutenberg editor, Elementor um, is premium. And there's tools for other, um, sorry, I'm trying to, um, anyway, they give you some explanation in some of their blog posts again on what you can do to make some of the other, um, the other apps and things. Yoast. Some of it, they said that they didn't like to, when they tried to make the changes on the Yoast end site in some situations when the other app changed things on their side. So they left it in charge of, for the other developers to add the integration to allow their, their program to work with Yoast rather than Yoast trying to make them work with everything else, if that makes sense. Um, and then WooCommerce is a plugin that you pay separate for. Okay, so um, Google Analytics, and um, Google Search Console. That's something that's really unique with uh, Rank Math. So Rank Math has Google Search Console is included for free. It integrates, so when you do your setup, you can connect it to your Google account and you'll have that data right there in Rank Math. If you have the premium version, you can also integrate your Google Analytics. And so then you get a whole bunch of data from that. Um, Yoast does not connect directly to your Google account, but does premium version will notice, notify you of outdated content that hasn't been updated in the last six months. And it'll show you like the five most used words and phrases on your page that you're editing in case, so you can see if that kind of syncs with the keywords that you're optimizing for or not. So rank tracking, that's something else that Rank Math has added in. They have a keyword tracker um, included. And then um, there's kind of advanced functionality on that in the premium version. And um, Again, Yoast doesn't have that. They do have information on their website about how to go about kind of tracking your results. In terms of education guidance support, um, Rank Math has um, support provided, uh, regardless if you have the free or the paid version. Um, example, I actually had to use that <laughs> when I was getting ready for this. I just moved my site over to WP Engine and there was a firewall that was blocking. So they do have an issue sometimes with rank math um, 
that the snippet does not update correctly and it's related to um, firewall that you may have if you have something like security or word fence on your website or if you're using uh, managed hosting that has their own firewall like uh, WP Engine does. Um, I actually had to have WP Engine whitelist the URL in question to make that functionality work. So that is you know, a technical glitch that you could run into that might have to be resolved, but they do have support. So that was great. They were able to take care of it. Um, I mean, Rank Math actually provided me with you know, the information of what needed to be done and then WP Engine was able to take care of it. So, but in terms of education, um, Yoast is really, really great in this area. They've been a huge contrib contributor to the WordPress ecosystem. They have a SEO Yoast Academy and that you can take. There are free courses. And then when you have premium, you get access to all of the other courses that are not normally free. And then they also have just really robust blog and website, um, just all kinds of how to and explanation of SEO and just really rich ecosystem of educational content. So local SEO um, in rank math, some of that is included for free. They have local business schema. Um, they have a your contact information. So if you have your contact information displayed on different places on your website and you need to update it, you could just update it in rank math and you have that short code in various different places on your website. It'll update everywhere so that you don't have to manually make sure you update it in each place. Um, the local SEO um, for is a premium plugin that you can actually purchase separately. And that folks think a lot on multi-location, which is also part of the pre of rank math. Well, it's one of the things that Nick was talking about last week, I mean last month I guess, when he was talking about businesses that have multiple different locations and creating separate pages for each of their locations. These two um, local SEO plugins really help their, or features within Yoast and rank math help with that. Okay, so XML sitemaps, both plugins will do that. Um, version of rank math you also get google news sitemap and video sitemap on yoast it's a separate plugin that you purchase for video seo and for news seo so these are each separate expenses if you want access to those breadcrumbs upper breadcrumbs customization is included in both um, they each have a type of role manager a little bit different in rank math they use your default wordpress roles, like you have your admin, editor, you know, and subscriber, you can really granularly with checkboxes control which parts of rank math each of those people can access. Um, with Yoast, they, it comes with its own two user roles that they've added. And so they've kind of grouped certain functionality for the editor and certain functionality for the SEO manager. And if you want to add custom roles, it would be similar to the process where you can actually add custom roles to your works installation. And they have, you know, a lot of advanced explanation, you know, information and instructions on how to do that. So then you get to, if you have an agency or business, rank have like a client manager where you can help see all the different sites that you have installed on and get some of your information on those at a global level, which is kind of nice if you're an agency or if you're a large business running this on multiple different sites that you own. Um, Yoast doesn't have a single universal dashboard like that as far as I know, but it does work if you have multi-site, for instance, it works on there and you would have, you might have more universal dashboard and they have discounts for multiple subscriptions if you're using it on multiple sites. Okay, so the rest of these features are more on the individual page when you are actually optimizing a page or a post. So keyword discovery, rank math integrates with Google Trends and that is in the premium version. Um, Yoast integrates with SEM Rush data and the premium on there, although I think on the, on the um, they've added it a little bit on the free version um, you get a little bit of uh, research data involved there, and I think there's more extensive uh, keyword you know, suggestions that it will give you if you have the premium. So internal leaking suggestions, 
Uh, Rank Map gives you suggestions for free. They, I saw a post about having automatic internal linking coming soon. Um, I think that was actually on Rank Map's site. So I think that is still coming soon and not quite in effect yet. Uh, so suggestions for internal linking are in the premium version of Yoast. So in terms of your focus keyword or phrase that it's gonna to use to give you all your optimization suggestions when you're editing a post or a page, they're similar in that way. Um, in the free version, each of them, you get one word or phrase. And then in the premium, you can add additional words or phrases, which is more realistic really than to optimize just for one single word or phrase in the way that Google looks at things now. But Yoast does talk about having key phrases, synonyms, related keywords, variations. So they give you suggestions on those things. So in terms of the content analysis, uh, the layout you'll see when we go into it for Rank Map is very similar to what you might be familiar with with Yoast. They also have, you know, little colored circles that are going to get, you know, they're going to turn green as you do better and you follow their recommendations. And they have a score on the top that's based on a percentage. So it'll be a score out of 100. And that's kind of color coded as well. So you get a little bit of that similar um, type of interface that you get with Yoast when you're optimizing a single post or page. And everybody who's used Yoast, I'm sure is familiar with the green circles that Yoast has. Okay, schema. This is one of the areas where um, rank math really kind of takes the cake. They have 16 different schema types supported. And then when you have the premium version, you can customize them even more. They have just really rich, um, your schema markup. If you have the premium version, they also integrate Google's uh, validation tool that you can use right there inside the app. They also have a way to import schema and from any URL. So even a website that's not yours, you can enter that URL, import the schema, and then kind of use that as a basis and customize it for your own um, needs. So they have really rich uh, functionality in this area. So Yoast has your, the basic schema for the most common things like for your organization, an article, um, a place, but they don't have as robust of a schema, schema functionality as Rank Math does. They do kind of talk about really relating to pieces of content saying, you know, that an article is written by an organization and they kind of make a point of pointing out that they say they have a better um, they give better context to the schema in terms of relating two pieces of data together instead of just having them all individually um, presented. So editing tools on Rank Map, you can edit the robot's text. It's that sort of for free. In the premium version, they have some efficiency tools. So they have this bulk editor that will help you edit um, posts, pages, custom posts, um, you can edit rep tags, which are the things that would go into a robot's text, but can also be in a meta form, say like no follow tags or um, things like that. Redirects, you can do all that in the bulk editor. They also, in the regular quick edit, when you're looking at, you know, if you're in the admin area and you see all your list of pages or posts and you can hover over, there's an edit button that will you know, you can edit the full post or there's a quick edit and there's a few items that you can edit in that quick edit without leaving the page. So in the premium version of Rank Map, they add a lot of this functionality to that quick edit button to make it a little quicker to make some changes there. So Yoast, you can also set uh, canonicals in both the free and paid. Um, you can mark things as no followed or sponsored. You can optimize, it'll help optimize your robots text for you, HT access, permalinks, all those things as well. And for all of those, they get pretty technical. So somebody who is not as technical and kind of you know, newer to SEO, the default settings in either of these plugins will do a pretty good job of getting you where you need to be. But you have the functionality if you really do get, you know, want to like geek out and get into the technical aspects and really customize those things, you have the functionality and the ability to be able to do that. 
So rank math also has something about the knowledge graph metadata that it says it pulls in to your pages and your content. And I haven't really played around with that yet, but I just mentioned it because it's something that they point out as a feature. And then in terms of previewing your um, SERP, the previewing what your result will look like on the search engine result page, the snippet, um, Rank Math, you can preview the Google search engine result page and then also a Facebook share and a Twitter share. Those are all included in the free version. And on Yoast, you can preview the Google snippet for free. And then the premium version will also show you previews of Facebook and Twitter. Um, Rank Math also has kind of a more robust image SEO um, functionality. They actually have a feature in the premium version that will automatically um, customize your image or optimize your images if you want them to. So it can actually dynamically add alt text for you, title text for you, and those are settings if you want to have it do that automatically for anything. Say you forgot to add alt text to an image. If you have that setting turned on, then um, anytime it finds an image that is not, that doesn't have alt text, it'll automatically grab, I think, like from information on that page or the title or something like that, and it'll image for you so that you don't have one with just blank alt text. So that's kind of a nice feature. There's also some more specific image editing functionality and things built into the premium version. Yoast, when you're editing your page, it does uh, check if you have alt text or not. So it'll warn you about that, but you just go into your image like the normal way in WordPress and add it in. And then Rank Math will ping the search engines when you make changes. Uh, Yoast has a lot of different integrations with uh, Zapier. If anybody's used that, you can set all, uh, all automations. Yoast has an integration and they give you a lot of different guidance and different things you can do with that to automate things. All right, so I'm gonna kind of stop there and go into a demo. Um, I should have made a slide that said pause for demo. Let's see if I can bring this over here. All right, can you guys see this page? Yep. Yep. All right. So I took a page, this is kind of an older page that I had on my website, and it's not even in my navigation, but I took this and it's got no SEO optimization, and we're going to try optimizing it. This has rank map installed right here. And then this copy of my site in a staging environment that has Yoast installed on it. And so we're going to try optimizing this with Rank Math and with Yoast. And you guys can see the difference of how that works. So we're going to go ahead and edit page. I'm going to have probably a pretty poor uh, score on here. Okay, so you can see this uh, score at the top, 37 out of 100 right now. And on this one, because I'm, I only have the free versions installed on here, so that's what we're just using for the demo. And so I only have one keyword that I can put in there. So because of that, I use something just real short, SEO, because um, if you go longer, it's harder to get it into all these places. And I want you get a little, um, you kind of increase the score. If you, you know, it, realistically, you'd want, yeah, you know, SEO is such a broad term. If I want this to be a services page, I might want, you know, SEO services or SEO optimization, you know, I mean, the, um, you know, SEO for a particular kind of website or in a certain location or whatever. So there could be, you know, you want to get a little bit more um, specific on that, but I'm just using something really general for this so that we can see how it affects everything. So if we look down the- By the way is what the creators of live videos, which often turn out to be for tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so focus keyword does not appear in the SEO title. So um, first thing we're gonna do is click in, let's see, up here, we can edit the snippet. And you can see on here, there is no optimized title. It's just going with the WordPress default. So we're gonna go ahead and add a title into there. Oops. These kind of ready to go. 
so that you can see you now how the scores go up as we do it. So let's say that's the title. And then they ask you, they also say focus keyword, it is not in your meta description. Um, one thing about that, you know, I've talked about this before when I've spoken at meetups that you don't necessarily with Yoast need to get hung up on getting every single circle green because some things on here are probably more important than others. Having your keyword in the title tag, for instance, is really gonna help you in search, that's super important. Having the keyword in your description tag is not nearly as important in terms of search. It's your description tag is gonna show up in your snippet, as you can see here, but it's much more critical in terms of click-through rate and encouraging people who see your search result come up on the page to actually click on your result compared to somebody else's. So, you know, if you don't have the keyword in your description, you know, you don't necessarily have to make that checkbox screen because that part, you know, really isn't as critical for ranking. But we added those both in there. So we got a couple more checkboxes and we are scores up to 78 now. We can preview what this would look like. This is the desktop preview on Google. And so my description is still a little bit long. The technical is going to get cut off right there, I think. I got a couple of different versions of this when I was playing around with it, but you can shorten that up so that it doesn't get cut off. But that's the preview there, so you know. And then the mobile view is going to be grouped like that. So you can get a preview of those two. And then you also get a preview of social. Now this image, I'll show you where that came from in a minute um, and we'll change it. But that's right now what the Facebook and the Twitter things would look like. So you can close that. Okay, so the next thing, focus keywords not appear in the beginning of your content. So that is one thing they talk about in SEO is having your keyword kind of near the beginning of your content. So I'm gonna add a little bit to the first paragraph so that it is included there. We're gonna add on to here. And so then I talked about SEO a little bit and that paragraph near the beginning of the page and then that turned green. So it says content is um, long enough, 680 words. I think even longer, I haven't tried it on one, I have to look at it on one that's even longer, but I think that would actually turn green. It's probably like a red, orange, green. Um, 680 words is, you know, it's a decent size, but it's not super long either. You know, you get into 1,000, 2,000 word posts if you're really doing like, you know, pillar content blog posts. So let's see what else it's giving us here. Add an image with your focus keyword as alt text. Okay, now can you see on here? Yep. Yep. All right, so I was starting to add an image block. I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but it was saying I didn't have an image on here that had the keyword in it. So it's suggesting that I have an image. And so that's the image block there. I select an image. I have one in the media library. Um, this one. And it's already got some alt text that I put in there. And so that one turned green. And let's see what else. Title. Your title doesn't contain a positive or negative sentiment. Title does not contain a power word and your SEO title doesn't contain a number. So the number is probably more, you don't necessarily need that every time, obviously. There, when you're doing blog post titles, things with numbers tend to get really good results. You know, top 10 reasons you should choose, you know, Yoast over rank math or, you know, five differences between these two plugins, having some kind of number like that. But if it's an actual page or a services page on your website, then the number doesn't make as much sense. 
So again, take these again, you have to really use your own mind and see what makes sense to do here. And if it doesn't make sense, don't worry about that little red circle. So I do have a headline that we're gonna swap out. Instead of just saying this. That's a little bit better. SEO services reach more people with search engine optimization. And that way you get a little bit more of the uh, headline in there. I don't think it's emotional enough. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and again, that goes back. If it were a blog post, you'd probably go for that a little bit more so than if it's a service page, right? So then content readability. They are suggesting a table of contents. I don't feel like this post is quite long enough really to that. I mean, you could put it up there and it gives you some in, a little bit of internal linking if you have some anchor tags throughout the page. But I do have subheads and the sections really aren't very long and that's it. So I don't know that this page, I don't really feel like it, you know, from a user perspective, it really needs a table of contents. If I had a 2000 word blog post, I think that would be a great idea. But I feel like with a 600 page, 600 word service page, not so critical. So I'm gonna leave it at that. But that gets us up now to 84 out of 100. And so we are in much better shape in terms of the optimization. So we can update that. What is the SEO title? Well, I mean, there's the title of the page and then. So SEO title, I think they're using kind of what people refer to as the um, meta title, but it's really not called a meta title. It's just called a title. So I think they're trying to distinguish between the headline and the title that goes in the code, which is also the title that goes up here in the, um, you know, the title that goes in the code is going to go up here in your tabs. Like like the title that you got at the top of your, in Gutenberg, it's the first thing you, you type on the page, that title. Mm, I think that's your, that's one of your headline. So okay. in this case, you know what, it looks like it still didn't update it correctly because it's putting, so as you see how the title up here in the tab, SEO mm -hmm. services reach more people, it's the same as my headline here. Yep. That's kind of default WordPress and even, you know, rank math functionality, right? Um, but I wonder if it still didn't save the snippet. Yep, still have the issue with the, uh, the URL um, firewall because the snippet, I had changed it, but it didn't save. Hmm. So that's um, that's a technical thing that I'm, if you can run into um, if you have certain security firewalls on your website and I need to resolve it with WP Engine and I've got a ticket with them, but I, I thought I tested it earlier and it worked, but anyway. So that's why that's not what I answered. But this title right here would be mm -hmm. the SEO title, which is gonna should be different. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same as your headline of your post that's on your page. Right. And, and does that go into the HTML somewhere? Is that mm -hmm. that ends up uh, um, as what kind of tag? Here, let me show you. Here, why don't we just go to So you can see in the HTML, so on any website, what's up here is generally uh -huh. the SEO title. And then if you look at the page source, so right here, mm -hmm. you have title, rank math, best free WordPress SEO tools, close title. So that's where that goes in the code. It doesn't actually show on your page itself. Right, okay, okay. But it'll show up here. And then also in the search engine result page, if we go back, it'll usually be what shows first in the search engine result right here at the top. And then this section below it is going to be from your meta description tag. Okay. So, okay. So let's try that same exercise with Yoast. This site has Yoast on it. Okay. So 
So, SEO needs improvement. I got a lot of sad faces here. Okay, so focus keyword SEO. It imported that from Rank Math. So I made a copy and then I installed Yoast and it didn't prompt me automatically to, to import my data from Rank Math, but it did have a button that says you can import data from other plugins here. And when I clicked that, Rank Math was one of the options. Mm -hmm. And so it brought that in. So readability analysis and passive voice. So that's something that they didn't talk about in the other one so much. Um, sentence length. And then they've got some good things here on the readability. The CEO, they want us to add synonyms and related keywords. Um, I'm not sure if you can do that on a, yeah. They click, have it there, and then you want you to buy the, the paid version. Same thing is gonna be with this. And so key phrase, key phrase and introduction, meta description link, there's no meta description, image alt attributes, so some of the similar things. So we're gonna make the same changes and kind of see how we um, do on here. All right, so let's, um, Okay. One second, sorry, trying to find the right place to actually make the changes. Okay, still over here. All right, so we're going to add the meta description and add actually headline highlighted already. So I'm going to change this and we'll see what it changes. And let's go ahead and do the image block since we're here. This is where I froze up on you before. <laughs> One. Where'd it go? Sometimes a block editor, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> to go back to where I was before. Okay. Select image should be here. So there, we're going to add those. Let's see if any of this, that's readability things, SEO analysis. And so then we, um, let's see, add a sentence to the first paragraph that we did before. See if that helps anything. And I tested this all on Rank Map. I did not test it all on Yoast anymore. So I'm, I mean, ahead of time. So I'm just seeing the changes as you are. So this is where we're going to get into our meta. So this again would be the SEO title here. And there's a default to a term. I'm going to delete that. Put this in there. Word description. We've got that. Again, it's warning us it's a little bit long, so we know that. We have those in there. Okay. So it's given us a green circle here. So we don't have the score like we did with um, rank math, but you've got at least a little bit more of these turned green, except the meta description is long and they're same. So we could shorten that if we wanted to. But 
and closer. Still a little bit long. All right. So it's given us better score there. And readability, I'm not going to go change in the language too much, but we got some green and some red here about passive voice and sentence length. We're going to leave those. So that kind of gives you an idea of these things are similar, but they're a little bit different in each one of the kinds of things that they point out. Rank math didn't have any of that kind of stylistic stuff in it, didn't Yeah, it didn't have as much of the readability thing. Yeah. It only it had more about like an emotional keyword, I mean, like a power word and mm -hmm. an emotion generating word and a number, but not as much about like passive voice and length of sentence, things like that, yeah. right? So they have a little bit different focus in terms of what kinds of, uh, you know, what they're saying about your writing. And again, these are each in the free version. So yeah, this is still on the editing. And they seem to have a little bit more focus on where your keyword is in the content that I wasn't seeing that specifically on Yoast as much. So, um, okay, so the other thing that I was going to show you in here is I can go ahead into, into the interface of each one and then you can see what those are like. So we'll go to, um, okay, so this is the Rank Math dashboard. And one thing, Rank Math really makes a big deal about being fast. So if you go to their website, they have a video and it's all about speed and quickness. Their code base, it's much, much lighter than Yoast. It's almost like half as much, as many lines of code as Yoast. And these modules, you can see, you can turn them on and off so that you don't have to be running anything that you're not using. So these are here as options I can turn on the 404 monitor, but if I don't need that, I can keep that turned off and then I'm not running as much code on my site. So you can just select the modules that you want to use and you can keep some of those off. So the setup wizard, let's just kind of take a look at that. So when you first start, you'll get put through the setup wizard. There's easy, if you really just wanna go with the default settings and you don't have, um, you know, a lot of background and technical background in terms of what you might customize or not. And then advanced and custom is, you know, if you're deaf, you know, really kind of high level. So advanced is what I went with and just run through the wizard here real quick. So this is where you can select, this is what's gonna go into some of your schema type of business. They want your logo. So right here, this is kind of a cool feature that Rank Math has. You can put a default share image. And that's why this was showing up in the preview that we, so when we were previewing what it would look like when we shared on Twitter or Facebook. And what this will do is if any page is shared on your website that didn't have a featured image for some reason, or it didn't have a good image to share, you know, sometimes you'll share a post or you'll share a link and the image that pops up kind of just doesn't look right and it's too small or it doesn't fit, or it might be an image that came from an ad there was something else that was on the page that wasn't related to the page. So this will give you kind of a default image for your website that will always be shared if you, um, you know, for some reason have a, uh, I was going to... Oh, I just had one that was going to upload, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to have to search through a bunch of file paths. But anyway, so that's a default image you can upload there. And so anytime you know you don't have an image on your post for some reason, and somebody shares it, this is you can have a default photo. And it's probably better not to have any text on it at all, so that it could go with just about anything, and just have a photo, right, or some kind of um, you know, graphic. So this is where you connect your Google services. And I haven't done that on here right now, but you can connect it to Google. And again, if it's free, you'll get search console data. data. And if you have the paid version, the premium, you'll actually get your, all your Google Analytics data as well. So that helps take the place of say some other plugins like Monster Insights that people might use because you'll get a whole SEO dashboard right here in rank map. So you can get rid of your redirection plugin, you can get rid of your monster insights plugin. So not only is rank math really um, lightweight in terms of code, but you can be eliminating some of your other plugins by using it.
we even continue with that. So this is for your sitemap. This is kind of similar to Yoast. You can choose what you want to include in your sitemap. So this would be for XML sitemap that'll get submitted to Google. And if you want to include images, posts, pages, any custom post type that you might have on your website, it'll ask you here if you want those included in the sitemap. And then categories. Um, so if I wanted my portfolio categories or only you know, blog categories, that's what I have selected there. And this gives you some basic settings in terms of no index. And you can actually no follow all of your external links at once. If you wanted to make it an automatic thing that you're not gonna allow follow links on your site at all, and you want every one of them to be no follow, you can do that here. And this would automatically open external links in a new tab or window, which I actually really like that feature. Um, I know in the past there were usability studies that used to like accessibility studies that recommended that links open in the same window because people didn't necessarily realize to go to another tab or go find the link. They didn't see where it opened or something like that. But I think now more and more people are used to that. And I always like them to open in a new tab or window so that it doesn't close your site. So if somebody links to an external place, they still have your website open in their another tab. So this is to me is a really nice thing, especially if other people are editing the website and don't think to check that little box when they're adding a link to open it in a new window. You can have all of them do that. And then you have a score here. Well, now you're doing so your site is ready and you can say set up advanced options and this is an example of the role manager that i was talking about so you can turn it on or off and for an admin editor author on your website you can check all the different boxes of which parts of rank map you want them to be able to access or not access so that makes it really easy to set this up for if you have editors or other people working on your site and contributor subscriber and those are all the default WordPress roles. And similar to rank math, I mean, there is a way in WordPress where you can add your own custom roles. I think if you do that, then those would show up here as well, because this just pulls in the WordPress roles. Okay, so 404 monitor, this goes to some of these things if you want them on or off, if you want automatic redirects on. Redirection is another plugin. I think I mentioned that that gets replaced. You know, I always had that as a separate plugin and I deleted it after implementing this. So schema markup, if you want your posts by default to be articles, but this gives you an idea of all the schema options on here. So this drop down, there's article, book, course, event, job posting, music, product, recipe, restaurant, video, person, service, software application. So there are a lot of different options for schema markup in the free version. So if you have you know, a custom post type that's recipes, you can set it to default to be the recipe custom post type or you know, schema type. So on these, I just have them all set to article. Or if you have events like calendar of events or things like that. And then you get out to where you have the entire um, list. And so if you go through and that setup wizard, if you do easy, for example, you don't have as many of these boxes on this page. So whatever option, it goes back to what you did in the setup wizard. If you went with a more advanced setup, then it gives you those same options here. If you went with the easier setup, it gives you those options here. It'll reduce so that it's not as overwhelming and you only see the things that you would know better how to um, work with. Then go into some of these other settings. It's you know all really easy to uh, click through all the settings in here. So this is just kind of gives you a, an idea of the interface. So this is similar functionality to Yoast that you can you know set your default separator, your default. Um, you know, titles and image tags and all kinds of things. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Yoast over here. And you guys can take a look at that one. And probably more of you have used Yoast um, and have seen the back end. Let me get to 
So this is our basic. Let's uh, reopen the configuration wizard. Let's do that again, just so you can see the difference between this one. So this one actually gives you the option of saying if you want your site to be indexed or not, um, which worked out well because this is a staging site that I created. So I said no in this case. And this is similar in terms of choosing what kind of business you have, so it can use that in your organization or a person, your logo, enter all these things. I didn't enter those on here. And you can always go back and enter them all later, right? So this goes back to if you want your post pages and other custom post types to be visible to search engines or not. So it's a little bit different. Um, way of asking the questions, but it's really the same information. This is about authors. If you're going to have multiple authors, actually, no, somebody else writes on my site. Your separator, website name. So it goes through a little bit of more of these in the setup part than the other one did. Whereas the other, I think on Rank Map, they you know, probably default a little more of this, and then you can go in and customize the options if you want to. Do you want to have Yoast track your information to update? Okay, and then they sell you some things. Yoast Academy. Oh. Okay. So in Yoast, you've got your options here where you can get to your different features and whether these things are turned on or off. And some of them. Turns it on or off. Integrations, webmaster tools you can add in there. Go down here to search appearance. So this is where you can customize more of your schema. So here in the schema, they have organization or person is kind of the main thing. And content types, you can have your settings for those. If you want them to show in not media, set some default settings. Taxonomies related to, um, you know, you can set patterns for your titles and your descriptions for, for your uh, categories and tags and things like that breadcrumb settings. So I'm not going to go through every single setting, but it just kind of gives you an idea of the difference of the interface. Similar functionality, just set up a little bit differently. So I think I'm going to kind of stop there and just open it up. Well, actually, let me just show you on here. I do have some resources on these slides, just in terms of this is for learning more about SEO. Yoast, like I said, really has some really great information. Yoast Academy. Uh, Neil Patel has great um, information for folks in SEO. I think Nick mentioned him last uh, week, last month also. Moz, um, this beginner's guide to SEO is a really, really great resource. Um, HubSpot Academy as well. So here's some tools in terms of keyword research, backlink uh, analysis, content research, Ahrefs, um, SEM Rush. Neil Patel's Uber Suggest tool. Answer the public is always really fun. And that's kind of a good way of trying to research content that you might want to write about, see what kinds of things people are looking for. Uh, Google Trends, which was integrated with the rank map. And then Moss Link Explorer will help you with some backlink uh, research. And then here's some more tools for technical site quality and health, um, page speed insights. Uh, Pingdom.com will also give you site speed information, um, local friendly test, and Google Search Console. Again, Ahrefs and SEMrush, always great tools. And that's it. So now, if you guys just have want to open up the questions. <laughs>